Welcome to the Fast Mode Podcast Series. I'm Tara Nil and with me today we have special guests from AWIS Networks, Ravi Kumar, Solution Architect and Ilona Gabinski, Vice President of Marketing. On a mission to deliver networks for AI and AI for networks, AWIS Networks was founded to modernize and transform the networking software stack, addressing the evolving needs of data centers, edge and GPU networks as they scale and integrate AI. Well, on to our guest, Ravi, specializes in advanced data center and cloud infrastructures with a passion for large language models. He designs and implements robust BGP, EVPN, OLA networks and excels in both routing and switching. With deep expertise in protocols such as BGP, VXLAN, EVPN, QoS, MacLag, ECMP and AI ML workloads. Along with a thorough understanding of LLMs and emerging technologies, Ravi has successfully deployed solutions across leading platforms, including Cisco Nexus, Catalyst, Alcatel, Dell EMC, Cisco ASA, and more. Our second guest, Ilona, brings extensive experience in product marketing within the technology sector and has a proven track record of leading marketing strategies that drive growth and enhance brand visibility. Her expertise spans various facets of marketing, including product positioning, go-to-market planning and customer engagement. At AWIS Networks, she focuses on promoting vendor-agnostic AI-driven networking solutions that empower enterprises to build and manage intelligent network infrastructures. Welcome, Ravi and Ilona. Great to have you guys on today's episode. Thank you for having us, Ara. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Awesome. Okay, so let's start. What does full stack AI networking really mean at AVS Networks and why is this concept so relevant today? Yes, uh, this is a great question, uh, Tara. So uh, if you really, you probably noticed that AI is redefining the infrastructure and it's not just redefining it in the networking um, world, but also all across everywhere in the market. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when I really think about AI workloads, I, uh, I have an, a teenager son, so I think mm-hmm. of AI workloads as teenagers. They are always hungry, growing fast, they need a lot of bandwidth. So, when you think about networks, uh, right now they are under constant pressure to support these massive mm-hmm. AI clusters. But the problem is that most legacy solutions were not built for that. And this is what we are solving at Tavis. So we uh, uh, deliver open, intelligent, and vendor agnostic stack uh, that can work with any NOS, any switch, uh, on, or any ASIC. And this mm-hmm. stack includes uh, network operations uh, functionalities, network observability, and AI powered automation. And it's all in one place. Mm-hmm. So what we really help our customers to do is build uh, networks for AI uh, workloads and as well as integrate AI in, into networks. So from designing fabrics for AI workloads to using AI to manage and, uh, and optimize the networks itself, we're helping customers uh, to operate them smarter. Mm-hmm. And Ravi, what's your take on this? Yeah, so building on Innova's point, right, from a technical perspective, full stack uh, networking AI means that every part of the network, from the physical hardware to the highest level of network automation, is optimized for AI workloads. So it's just not about having the infrastructure in place, it's also about orchestration, real time telemetry, and automated insights into an ecosystem that's not, that's not just a single vendor. So you have an ecosystem with multi vendor, multi hardware SKU, and multi ROMs, NOS, right? So our solution, right, like once for orchestration or OPB and ASN for advanced observability ensures that every component, whether you're working with Sonic, Spectrum X or any other hardware, who operates in Harmony. So we help customers bring all their data into, into a single place, give them smart insights, no matter the vendor, the hardware or network system that they're using. Mm-hmm. 
Wow, I think, yeah, yeah uh, looking at, you know, the way um, AI workloads are dominating data centers today, right? So we can see that, you know, the importance of this uh, and how this actually enables a lot of AI, including Gen AI applications to be delivered, you know, seamlessly. Okay, brilliant. So to dive deeper into this, right, uh, what are some of the traditional differences between full stack AI networking solutions and traditional networking solutions? Yeah, Tara, this is really a very good question. Um, so traditional networks are often pretty static. And they are hardware centric and usually tied to the proprietary software from a single vendor. And that, that setup makes it really hard to scale, automate or even innovate quickly. So that's what we do at Avis. We really innovate uh, every day with one aim to deliver open source networking solutions to our customers um, and our AI networking stack the main difference it is open so it can work on any hardware any switch or mm -hmm. any ASIC yeah, mm -hmm. it's software defined uh, and mm -hmm. it is intelligent so we support uh, open source uh, network operating systems such as Sonic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we also support Cumulus and if you're working with NVIDIA Spectrum X, we support that too. And additionally, we use conversational AI for real insights from day one. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. whole different level of flexibility and control, really designed for modern dynamic environments like AI data centers, like you mentioned. And to further, further illustrate, right, our mm -hmm. approach to the full stack AI network is software defined, right? That means the orchestration, telemetry, automation are built right into our system from the ground up. And as Ilona mentioned, right, our solution not only works with open source Sonic, but it also works in multi-vendor environment, whether it be Cumulus or NVIDIA Spectrum S, X, sorry, Spectrum X. So these choices enables our customers to break free from vendor lock-in. Mm -hmm. it, it offers a scalable architecture with every component, whether it be fabric management to real-time telemetry, mm -hmm. they all speak the same language. And what truly sets us apart is our integrated rule engine driven with AI insights powered by our network co-pilot. The system continuously monitors your network performance and generates alerts, allowing you to optimize your network in real time rather than waiting for manual intervention. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this, so you have like a very, um, very comprehensive stack that comes with everything from orchestration, you know, to automation and all that. So, so this really eases uh, service providers and network owners to basically just take this, deploy it in their data centers, you know, or, or in their cloud platforms and then just roll out, uh, you know, the applications and so forth. So that, that, that sounds really amazing. So I know we, we are interested to, to learn more about uh, AVIS networks and, you know, you mentioned about Sonic, right? So can you share more details about community Sonic? Yeah, so let's say at AVS Networks, right, we work with Sonic community to drive collaboration and open innovations. So we help our customers deploy Sonic. Uh, we offer a solid vendor neutral network operating system that plays well with different switching platforms. So the open source foundation, it enables rapid innovation, continuous improvements driven by contributions from a dedicated global community and network professionals, right? Mm -hmm. And I would like to emphasize here, it's a key part of our open open uh, AI full stack approach, right? So ensuring that all our solutions work smoothly with industry leading hardware and obviously benefiting from collective mm -hmm. expertise. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. just like to add something here because uh, at Davis, we go even further. Uh, mm -hmm. We work very closely with Sonic of community, of course, but what we actually do, we certify community Sonic by testing mm -hmm. the quality of Sonic deployments okay. on any switch and then any ASIC. And we have just concluded uh, the event that is called Plug Fest, where more mm -hmm. than 50 com uh, companies mm -hmm. participated and tested uh, their real life use cases. So, and now we uh, we have the report available actually on our website with the results mm -hmm, of mm -hmm, the um, mm -hmm. quality of the quality of Sonic deployments on the choice of their switch and on the choice of their use cases. Mm -hmm. uh, and I encourage our listeners to come and uh, check it out on our website. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, that that sounds really interesting. And you you guys talked about openness, and you t- uh, you know uh, the the fact that you cater for open source uh, architectures, and then also you know you provide scalability and automation, everything bundled in. So okay, what are the benefits that uh, you know um, your customers can expect? Uh, maybe in terms of costs, you know, in terms of performance improvements and stuff. Would you like to you know uh, share with us on that? Yeah. So. We recognize that so, uh, Sonic's open source architectures brings crucial advantages to the table, mm-hmm. especially with the vendor neutrality and cost saving. With yeah. Sonic, our customers have first the wide range of all the hardware available to the industry, so they're mm-hmm. not tied to a single proprietary system. Additionally, the cost savings are significant. By eliminating the licensing fees and reducing uh, reliance on proprietary support, right? Sonic helps organization optimize their network investments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, I would just like uh, to add a couple of things here. Actually, we have just recorded the webinar with Alan Beckel from 650 Group, along with mm-hmm. uh, WWT and Keysight. Mm-hmm. And the title of this webinar is called, Is Sonic the Right Fit for Your Organization? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Alan, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. and Alan mm-hmm. has actually shared uh, a great insight. Uh, he he shared that right now what is happening in the market is really a, str- a trend of strong adoption of Sonic, and it's not mm-hmm. happening only across the hyperscalers, but also across enterprises mm-hmm. uh, within every vertical, and it continuously growing. And so the prediction is that by 2028, 30 percent of all the data centers will be running Sonic. Wow, that, that's a huge proportion, actually, come to think about it, right? That's one third. And given yes. the, the kind of workloads that we see today and that we project in the future, I think that that's going to be like a, quite a dominant uh, portion of it. Okay, so I, I think, you know, um, th- th- this, this is really interesting. And, um, you know, we want to know how this really impacts um, real world deployment. So can you share some real world uh, use cases for full stack um, AI networking? Yeah, so our full stack AI networking solutions, right, they are built to redefine how modern data centers operate. Mm -hmm. So, for example, so some of our large scale customers, right, they have deployment uh, with multi vendor, multi hardware Mm -hmm. SKU or multi NOS environment, and they are using ones to actually orchestrate it and have ASIC level visibility on it. Now that you have all the visibility in place, you have a rule engine that sits Mm -hmm. on top of it. So you can create some rules and notifications to proactively monitor your fabric. Now, okay. with the with a orchestration done, you have your fabric ready and you want to monitor what kind of traffic is flowing in it, right? So mm-hmm. you have open packet broker running with ASN for deep visibility into the traffic that is actually flowing there. Now, we also have open packet broker that sits on all top of all this telemetry that is being collected by once by a OPB or ASN. Mm-hmm. So it lets you, it's an AI generator, it, it's an AI assistant that mm-hmm. sits on top of it and it lets okay. you ask questions in natural language. Mm-hmm. So you can go in and ask, is my network healthy or can mm-hmm. you do an audit report for my network and you can get actionable insights in real time. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of our customers talking about real time, real world use cases, some of our customers are actually in Japan. And we mm-hmm. are really proud about it is because uh, when um, When you talk about quality, the real test of uh, quality of the product is happening in Japan because customers uh, in Japan, they don't really care much about marketing or about anything else. They just care about the product and the service uh, of the quality and the service of the certain product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm really uh, proudly saying that our products are deployed in some of the major enterprises in in Japan as well as in the US, and now we are also expanding into other countries. Wow, okay, that, that, that means that you're gonna have a, like a, a busy year ahead and probably a lot of excitement deployment stories that you, you guys can share with us. Absolutely, okay. looking forward to that, yes. Okay, awesome. So um, we have looked at how networks are being built to cater for AI. Now let's look at the flip side of things, right? So um, using AI for networks, and you guys have mentioned about this, you know, um, you know, the telemetry and then goes into the automation um, channels and then how all this information allows you to automate a lot of functions and then you have Gen AI to help with that automation as well. So what are your thoughts on this? 
Yes, uh, so as you mentioned, and Ravi, I think we already mentioned about our stack and how we build networks for AI and then AI for networks. Mm -hmm. And this is where yeah. things get really exciting, um, yeah. I think. Um, so AI isn't just something your network supports, it's something that should support your network. So with Network yeah. Copilot, uh, uh, network operators, instead of relying on complex scripts and multiple dashboards, they can just simply, it, it's a conversational AI that we are uh, enabling. Uh, so they can just simply ask a question like you would ask ChatGPT. For example, generate the audit report of my network. Mm -hmm. Is my network mm -hmm. compliant? Or mm -hmm. uh, list devices in my network. Okay. So it's really like giving every engineer a smart assistant. So mm -hmm. no code, no dashboards, mm -hmm. just answers. It, yeah. What re it really does, it turns routine operations into something much more dynamic, scalable, and user-friendly. Exactly. Using AI for networks, right? It's a, it's a game changer. It's, mm -hmm. as, I, as I mentioned, it's all about con converting all the telemetry da data that you have into actionable insights. So by integrating AI into a network, the, mm -hmm. you enable your networks to essentially monitor itself. So mm -hmm. allowing you to anticipate issues and fix them proactively. For, mm -hmm. for example, right, our network co-pilot, it runs locally in your network. Mm -hmm. It lets you interact with it through natural chat-based interface, and it can help you generate reports, charts, and much more, all with simple conversational inputs. It's, not a, not, it's, it's all about streamlining your operation and overall uh, giving your team the ease of using and talking to your network, basically. Fantastic. Well, uh, that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you, Ravi and Ilona, for joining us and for sharing all these insights on the concept of uh, full-stack AI networking and AV's network's role in th this space. Thank you, Tara. Thank you very much, Tara. Thank you, Ravi. It's great to be here. And to everyone tuning in, thank you guys for listening. If you want to learn more, visit www.avsnetworks.com and follow us for more updates and insights as we continue to uncover the latest in technology and telecommunications. See you in our next session. Bye-bye.